the Commissioner of Political Practices, ensures the integrity and transparency of campaigns, politics, and government in Montana. A key part of this role is overseeing lobbying activity in the state. In one of our latest auto reports, we found that Montanans lack easy access to comprehensive, timely information about lobbying activities that influence the state's legislature. To address this, we've identified several improvements, including the need to more thoroughly enforce compliance with statutory reporting requirements and changes to the manner and frequency of reporting. We assess whether the Office of the Commissioner of Political Practices provides complete lobbying information to the public, ensures timely reporting by organizations that hire lobbyists, known as principals, and finally, whether the office follows best practices or is user-friendly with public access to lobbying information. I'm content editor and host Eric Seidel, and I'm here with the author of the audit report titled Public Access to Lobbying Information, Christiane Redman. Stay with us as we discuss all this and more in the latest episode of the Legislative Audit Division podcast. As I said, I'm here with the author of the audit report, Chris Rudman. Chris, how are you? I'm good. I'm excited to be here and talk about the Commissioner of Political Practices. Chris, I know the first thing I think of when you bring up the Commissioner of Political Practices are political campaigns or election finance, things like that. But in your report, it it looks like you focus more on the lobbying aspect of COPP. Yes, exactly. We actually looked at lobbying and the Commissioner of Political Practices, or COPP, which you'll probably hear me say more often today, um, is charged with ensuring integrity and transparency of our election campaigns, of politics, and in government. And a part of that is lobbying that happens in our state. We have about 450 principals. Those are the companies or organizations that hire a lobbyist in our state. And they have to report to the Commissioner of Political Practices their lobbying activities. We were interested in how do we as members of the public, and that is you as listeners, that is Eric and I sitting here, that is our legislators, how do we learn or get to lobbying information that the COPP collects? Okay, so it sounds like a big part of your report then is, you know, the the quality of this information that COPP is collecting, but also how easily can a member of the public access this information if they want to learn more about the lobbying taking place in Montana? Correct. And part of what we looked at or part of what that entails is are expenditures reported, are the bills or the issues reported to the commissioner that lobbyists are advocating for, is there timely disclosure, and I'll get a little bit more into what timely disclosure is, and then I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about easy access and what is easy access. Okay, so on the subject of access, in reading your report, it sounds like one of the biggest problems with accessibility for the public in in getting this information is the fact that the information can come in two different ways in two different databases, right? Correct. When we started looking into the data that is reported to the Commissioner of Political Practices, we learned that principals, again, those companies that hire lobbyists, They can file the reports electronically, so they can go online and file it there. They are still also allowed in Montana to file their reports on paper. The COPP then has two different ways they get the reports, so the reports are saved in two different databases. We have a database with the online filings, we have a database with the paper filings. So you as a listener need to look into two different databases to find lobbyists information. Okay, so if someone looking for this lobbying information wasn't already familiar with the two different places to look or databases, they might miss something or or even just be out of luck. So I've got to imagine that there's a way most states do this or some best practices. Absolutely. What we found is that the industry standard is electronic reporting. We have U.S. Congress and other states all mandate electronic reporting only The mandates are often in statute or in rule, 
And what we found is that when electronic reporting is in place, information is available to the public. The moment reports are submitted, it eases the data being searchable, sortable, and usually also helps with you being able to download and look at the data yourself. And did you find that Montana follows any of the best practices that you mentioned? What we found is that in Montana, our laws and rules are silent on how principals should file their lobbying reports. The COPP, though, has had electronic reporting in place since 2013. However, principals can still file reports on paper. And if there was only electronic filing, what would that mean for Montana? It would mean we only have one online reporting database in Montana, so one place to go to for lobbying information. This would be an important change because it eases the access for the public and it lessens the burden for staff at the COPP office. Since mandating electronic reporting would constitute a policy change, we made the recommendation to the legislature to change statute to mandate electronic lobbying reporting. Okay, so that first recommendation really focuses on where the information that's collected goes and cleaning it up to one electronic database. As we move forward into the report, how about you tell me what's being collected by COPP? What's some of that information that they're getting? Sure. So some of the things principals have to report are contact information. You know, who are their lobbyists? Where are they located? The same for the principal. The lobbying topics. So what are the subjects lobbyists are working on? Specific bills, And then what most of us may think of are the expenses. Okay, and now that we know some of the things that are being reported, can you just share uh, what do you do to, to check to see that the reports are being done correctly? Sure. We looked at about 200 reports from 50 random principals and found that the reports were missing information such as principals' business addresses and lobbying expenses, but especially information on lobbying subjects and specific bills was missing from the reports. Okay, but what's COPP's role in all this? So Montana law requires the COPP to inspect reports within 10 days of filing and to follow up if the reports don't meet the requirements. What we found, however, is that COPP staff only do a cursory review of the reports And that review is focused on whether reports are filed by their due dates, but not on whether the report contains all the statutorily required information. Okay, so they're checking for the due dates, but not for that additional required information. Was there anything else? We also learned that the COPP does not have policies or procedures that could guide staff in how to do a lobbying report review. And we learned that the COPP has not yet used its authority to audit reports, something other states have told us they do to assess compliance and continuously improve their reporting process. Okay, and I'm assuming all of this led you to a recommendation. Yes, it did. Because the COPP does not prioritize enforcing the reporting requirements as they are laid out in statute, we recommend the COPP conduct the required inspections to ensure filed reports comply with all statutory reporting requirements. Additionally, we recommend the COPP establish policies and procedures for the lobbying program and conduct audits on a regular basis. Okay, so that last recommendation focused on the reporting requirements. And you've mentioned where you'd have to go to find all of the different lobbying report information. But what about the timeliness aspect? of filing these reports, or or how often do principals have to file these reports? Since Montana's legislature meets biannually, principals register with the COPP for two years at a time. When they report, those dates are a little tricky, so bear with me. In that two-year period, Montana requires principals to file three lobbying reports. An initial report by mid-February, capturing the start of the legislative session. The second report 30 days after the session has ended, and the third mandatory report in February the following year that captures the entire session year. Okay, I think I understand it, Chris, but doesn't that still leave 21 months in that two-year span? What's going on to record lobbying activities in those months? 
For the other 21 months, principals only need to file a report if their lobbying expenses exceed $5,000 in a given month. For example, if I hire you, Eric, to lobby for me, and your payment is within the typical range of three to just under $5,000 a month, I won't need to file a report, and the lobbying activities go unreported unless additional expenses push my total lobbying costs over the $5,000 threshold. So while we learned that most reports in Montana are filed by their due date, we also found, like in the example I just gave, that lobbying reporting in Montana is not frequent enough to provide the public with meaningful access. Okay, but what's considered frequent? And are there best practices that would outline that? We learned that best practices for timely reporting are monthly reporting or monthly reporting during the legislative session and quarterly for the remainder of the reporting period. But what I found most interesting in the example is that $5,000 threshold. Unless you go over it, you aren't required to report your audit activities. It is also important to eliminate the $5,000 threshold. U.S. Congress and most other states do not have a threshold for lobbying reporting, which means all expenses are reportable and reports have to be filed even if there is no lobbying activity to report. Okay, then where does that leave you as far as a recommendation? We recommend the Montana legislature remove the statutory $5,000 reporting threshold and mandate monthly reporting during the legislative session and quarterly for the remainder of the reporting period. Okay, and as you close out your report, one of the last things you focus on is the need for some website improvements for the Commissioner of Political Practices, right? Yes, the last aspect we haven't touched on is the need for a user-friendly reporting platform where the public can access the reported lobbying information. While mandating electronic reporting would eliminate having to search two websites and improve user-friendliness to some degree, we found that the COPP's electronic reporting website would still need some improvements to meet best practices. Okay, like what? What, what are some of those improvements? Best practices for user-friendliness of lobbying websites are search features that provides search results in as few clicks or search steps as possible, easily accessible lists of lobbyists and principals, and the data being available for download in a spreadsheet format. Other states' websites also offer the ability to search for bills and subjects. But we found that the COPP's existing electronic reporting platform is not currently meeting those best practices. We therefore recommend the COPP update their platform's interface to implement the mentioned best practices. All right, Chris. Well, thanks for joining me today to talk about uh, your audit titled Public Access to Lobbying Information, which was over the Commissioner of Political Practices. Uh, another quick reminder that you can read more about this or any of our audit reports at archive.legmt.gov lad. Again, Chris, uh, thanks for joining me today and talk about your audit report. Thanks for having me today, and for our listeners, please take a look at the report for all the details we couldn't cover. And before we close out, just a note to the listeners, we'd like to give you an idea on how the agency or department responded to the audit. In this case, out of the four recommendations, two were made to the Montana legislature, and two were made to the Commissioner of Political Practices. The COPP partially concurred with recommendation number two, and fully concurred to all the other recommendations. Thanks for listening. Again, I'm Eric Seidel, and this was the latest episode of the Legislative Audit Division podcast.